you're in a psychology class and you have to write a paper. Nine times out of ten, your instructor wants scholarly sources only, and you need some direction on where to search, uh, what thing, what tips and tricks will get you exactly what you're looking for, especially if you have an idea of a topic and you go to the databases just straight on and you're not finding what you need. Well, this video is for you. We're going to talk about today about how to topic sentence, how to keyword, how to evaluate your sources, and then how to search in the databases. How to topic sentence. Now, how to topic sentence, how to keyword, it's just basically how to come up with the topic sentence and how to come up with the keyword. But I like to use them as verbs because they're really, really important in the process of finding the research that you need. So how to topic sentence. When you're coming up with a topic sentence, especially for psychology where you're going to find a lot of uh, these scholarly resources, which we'll talk about what that means a little bit later, but when you're finding these actual research articles that you're looking through, it's really important to have a clear idea of what your topic is. And a way to get that clear idea is to look at these things here. So your topic is a center. It could be very general. Maybe you want to look at something with college, something dealing um, an issue at ECU maybe. So that's your topic in the center. That's your entire world is your general topic. And then what you should ask about your topic is who, why, what, when, how, and where. When you're asking these questions, what you're doing is specifying your topic. So something as general as ECU or college students, there are a million different topics that you could come up with that you can search for. Okay, so to limit your results so you're not searching through thousands and thousands of things, ask these questions and decide if you want to break your topic down in, with any of these variables. So with the topic of college students, uh, why, are you, why are you interested in college students? Is it uh, something that you're already thinking of? So if you chose college students because you're at college at ECU, maybe there's a specific issue here at ECU that you know about that you want to research. So why did you choose that original topic? Uh, maybe you want to look at when, uh, college students in the 50s, maybe that's what you're interested in. Maybe there's a specific time period. Or where, uh, like I said, maybe you want to search specifically ECU. Or maybe you just want to focus on college students on the East Coast or in the South. So think about these six things when you have your general topic to sort of come down to specifics on what you're looking for because it'll really narrow your results down when you're searching and it'll get you exactly what you're looking for. Now on to how to keyword. So again, how to keyword is how to come up with these keywords and they're exactly what they, it sounds like. So these are the key words that you're gonna be searching when you get to the databases. And it's really important and it's a really great idea to come up with these beforehand um, so that when you get to the databases, you have a number of things you can start searching, especially if you get stuck on something. So how to keyword is to sort of pick apart your topic sentence. So you came up with your topic sentence in the previous part, and now you take that sentence and you break it apart. And a really great way to pick apart your topic sentence is to think about your dependent variable and your independent variable. Um, you may have talked about this in your psychology class already, but if you haven't, so your dependent variable, it's, really, it's a, a really great way to figure this out is it depends on the independent variable. So say our topic is how does alcohol education affect the drinking rate of college students, right? So let's figure out our dependent and our independent variable. So the independent variable in this topic sentence is alcohol education. And why? Because alcohol education is, it stands alone. It can stand alone. So that is the one thing that's going to do something to drinking rate. So a change in the drinking rate depends, it's dependent variable, it depends on alcohol education. So again, the alcohol education can stand alone, it's your main thing that's independent, it's stable, it sticks there, and it affects something else in your topic sentence, which is the drinking rate. Okay. So a change in the drinking rate depends on alcohol education. So if you apply alcohol education to the drinking rate, a change will happen, or that's what you're positing, is that a change will happen. 
Okay. So go with your topic sentence and come up with these independent and dependent variables because to come up with your keywords, you're going to take your topic sentence again and what you're going to do is again pick it apart and take that independent dependent variable and also the population that you're studying to come up with other terms for it or that's what you're going to be searching in the database. So when I get to the database, I'm going to be searching alcohol education and drinking rate. I want to see the link between my dependent and my independent variable. So when I get to the database, those are the two terms I'm searching. Now what if I get there and there's too much or it's just not exactly what I want because I'm focusing on college students. So maybe it's focusing on um, adults or uh, adult, older adults who are in uh, rehab. Okay, so how do I get to just talking about college students? Well, you add that in there. So I'm going to search alcohol education and drinking rate and college students. Okay, but what if I put that in and it's still not getting me what I want? What can I do? Well, this is where the keywords come in. This is where it pays to take that time beforehand and just write it down. Write down your three variables and then what you do is Take drinking rate, for example. What's another term for drinking rate? What is a synonym or what means the same thing? So drinking rate is the rate at which you're drinking. What's another term for that? Alcohol consumption. So the rate that you're drinking, you're consuming alcohol. It means the same thing. So say you search those three things, you come up with some articles, but it's still not enough. You still want some more and see what else is out there. Stick in another keyword. So instead of drinking rate, put in alcohol consumption, and you might get other terms. The purpose of or what you're doing when you go into a database is you are putting in words and you're saying database, search any article, search all of your results for these terms together. Okay, So search for an article that has alcohol education and drinking rate and college students. But what if an article uses alcohol consumption instead of drinking rate? That's not going to show up in your results. So that's where these key, again, these keywords come in handy, switch them out, and you're going to get different results. So let's take college students, for example. You can break that up as well. So for college, what are the terms? University, higher education. So if you put these terms in instead, you're going to get other results. For students, you can break it up, male, female. Maybe you want to look at specifically female students or specifically male students. Um, maybe you want to look at students in sororities or fraternities. That's another thing you can switch out for keywords. And then also, if you do male-female, what's another term for female? Women, girls, male, men, boys. So before you even head to the databases, sit down and work through your topic. Um, and sometimes it's as easy as, especially when coming up with your topic sentence, just talking it out in your head. Why did you pick this topic? What makes you interested about it? Did you see an article? What about that article did you like? And then you pick it apart, independent, dependent variable to come up with your keywords, and then come up with more keywords by breaking it apart in this way. Okay. So once you've done that, um, you head to the databases, and at the end I'll talk about um, where to find a search uh, demonstration of the searching the database. But what if you do all this, you put all these in, you have this really great list of resources, what do you do next? How do you know that the sources that you found are, are ones that you can use? So how do you evaluate these sources? Outside of this video, um, we have some tutorials there. So you can pause the video or wait till the end and do those tutorials. There's one on how do you evaluate web pages. So if you're looking for these sources on um, web pages, if you get information from there, how to tell which web pages are good ones, um, how to tell what sources are scholarly, popular, or trade, and then finally, it'll give you a chart of five things that you should look for in every source to tell if it's a good one or not. Okay. Go through those tutorials on how to evaluate your resources. And then also there's another tutorial on um, that's a search demo to go through PsycInfo. That's primarily the database that you're going to be searching in for your psychology articles. So if you do that tutorial, it opens up the database alongside a little tutorial and has a sample topic and just allows you to walk through searching in the database and shows you some of the searching tools that will be really helpful to you. Also, I want you to think about um, maybe you don't only want to search in a psychology database. Maybe your topic spans across other disciplines. 
So for example, if you want to look at alcohol consumption, uh, that affects not just the mind, but also the body. So maybe you want to search in a health database for some articles that pertain to alcohol consumption in college students. Or maybe um, your topic focuses on college students. Uh, maybe you want to look at how alcohol consumption or drinking rate affects grades. You might want to open up an education database and search there. So if you want to do that, we also have database demonstrations for other databases as well. So if you open up our library homepage and go to tutorials, all of our database demonstrations are here. So if you want to try an education or um, if you want to try out a um, health database, uh, then you can do that here. Okay. Also, to get to PsycInfo, just start at our homepage, go to database list, and you know the name of it. So you can click on P and just scroll down to PsycInfo there. All right. So go through these steps, um, really focus on these four things because it'll cut down the time that you're spending searching and it'll give you a better chance of finding exactly what you need. And as always, if you're having trouble, if you're having issues with your topic or searching um, or using the databases, please feel free to ask a librarian. Uh, that's what we do, the research librarians, we are here to help and um, yeah, just feel free to contact us.